Good morning. Good morning. This is James Hayes, April 28, 2021, with your Virus Versus Versus with Jesus is Lord Fellowship on 2236 Massachusetts Avenue, Toms River, New Jersey. Our services are on Sunday at 9 a.m. and 1030. You are more than welcome. I want to share with you today um, about prayer and about what can hinder it. I want to speak especially to men. In Genesis 2, 18, it says, The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. Or in one version it says, A helper fit for him, and a helper suitable for him. God made the woman for man to be a helpmeet, to be someone that is fitly joined together with you, to be suitable for your life. And then he tells us, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. That's Proverbs 18.22. You can have God's favor in your life when you find a good thing, a wife, suitable for you, and that you're willing to work together, stand together through the good times, through the bad times, through all the heartache and pains, through the sweat, the tears, and all the other stuff that comes along, life. If you trust God and don't lean to your understanding, you will acknowledge the fact that God is the one who has made us and not we ourselves. And he has the plan. And he wants to work that plan out in our lives. He tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11 that he has a plan for us. But in Psalm 138, verse 8, he says, I will work out my plan for your life. That's in the Eastern Standard Version. It's 138, 8 in the Psalms. But I just want to tell you this. In 1 Peter 3, 7, he says, Husbands, in the same way be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with a, a, a gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Your mouth can ruin and block your blessing. I'll say that again. Your mouth can ruin and block your blessing. If you want to obtain favor from God in your household and your married husbands, check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's what we grew up saying, but it's very true. Check yourself. Put your mouth in check. It's better to call on God than uh, be a badger, beating down people. I shared this a long time ago. In the first 12 years of my life, I had, I had an accident. Let me back up. I had an accident. And I was out in the yard doing some work, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you got to apologize to your wife. And I said, but I was right. And the Lord said, well, how often have I been right, and how often do you listen? It was conviction time, rather. Let me tell you, it was conviction time. God is never wrong, but I had an attitude. And I was right, but I had an attitude, and it was bad. And I was wrong. So I went, and he said, well, if you want the blessing, of the new home, you have to go in there and apologize to your wife. Well, I know I couldn't go pretending. I went to my wife, to my children, we had to go out and talk, and I apologized. I said, the Lord said, for the last 12 years, I've been beating you up with these words because you didn't do what I wanted. Did you hear me? It was 12 years of me. I called her the nag. But Lord said, you've been the nag. You the one with the big mouth. You don't want to put your mouth in check. If you do what I say, you'll get blessed. Don't you know? He blessed us so swiftly after I yielded and obeyed and put my mouth in check. I didn't have to worry about losing the favor with God anymore because I put things back in order so that when I open my mouth, I can go to five, Psalm 5, verse 3, and say, Give ear to my words, O Lord, and consider my meditation, hearkening to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto you will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord, and the morning will I direct my prayer, and unto you I will look up. You can call on God. That's what he says in Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call on me, and I'll answer you. God is our very present help in our times of trouble. All this stuff going on around us, we need to pause and, and, and take a look at life. None of us have been perfect. And on that note, let me say this about those who want to pick up stones and toss them out, think they can tear down any progress you've made. King David uh, was a sinner. He, he had 
he committed adultery, he had his friend killed, that's murder. But yet later you find out he was a man after God's own heart. It's called repenting. And when people truly repent, see, you can't fool God. And you turn from your wicked ways and you pursue him. It doesn't matter what people are saying about you. The Bible says, trust God and lean not to your own understanding because people are going to talk. But this is what God says about that. Brethren, than them praying and they're talking, he says in Psalm 105, 1015, whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. God's not putting up with the stuff that you think has been, he's been long suffering and he's been tolerating it for years. You can look around with all the stuff that has been shaking up things all over the place. It's time to humble yourself before the mighty hand of the Lord. It's time to come before God and say, Father, forgive me, for I too am a sinner. I need Jesus in my life. Save me and turn me from my wicked ways. Help me, Holy Spirit. That's just a simple direction on how you can pray. But I just wanted to share with you, don't let your mouth ruin your destiny. Hear me clearly. Don't let your mouth block your destiny. If you're going to do anything, give praise to God. And he said, I will inhabit. I will come in and take up residence in your situation. That's what you want. You want the Lord God working with you, not against you, saying that he will destroy you. Well, that's all I have to say about that. Love you. God bless you. God keep you. God smile upon you. Have a great day in Jesus Christ our Lord.